Hello everyone, my name is Lino Choa, and in this video I would like to introduce BreakBot, a bot for assessing library evolution. This is a joint work with Thomas de Gell and Jean-Rémy Fayetti. However, before starting to talk about BreakBot, I would like to talk a little bit about software libraries. A software library is nothing more than a software project that offers a set of features that can be reused by client projects. Typical examples of software libraries in the Java ecosystem are Google Guava, which offers a set of data structures, JUnit, which helps us test our own code, Neo4j, which allows us to interact uh, with graph databases, and Apache Commons, which offers a set of uh, core components that extend the capabilities of the Java language itself. What's interesting about these libraries is that they are constantly evolving. And you can see this evolution, for instance, on GitHub by checking the number of commits, the number of branches and tags that have been created, number of pull requests generated by other developers, and the number of forks, just to mention a few. What's even more interesting about this is the number of repositories that depend on the library and then can be positively or negatively impacted by those changes. In the case of Google Guava, we have almost 300k repositories depending on the library, meaning that every time that we introduce a change, we might have an impact on, on such repositories. Now the story doesn't end here. It happens that Guava also lives in the environment or in the ecosystem of Maven. And in this case, you have a screenshot of some of the releases of Google Guava and also the number of usages uh, or dependencies that other artifacts have on such releases. So this means that every time you introduce a change, you might be potentially impacting these artifacts in a negative way. Such changes are what we know as breaking changes. And breaking changes can result in a broken use. A broken use is actually client code that is impacted by uh, the aforementioned changes. So now, just to have a better understanding of these two concepts, let's look into an example. In this case, we have a library that's called Spoon. Spoon has an interface called an import scanner, which has one method, compute imports. And on the other side, we have Aster, a client project that uses this interface. You can see here that we have a reference to the import scanner interface. We are creating a new instance, and we are then using uh, the instance to invoke the compute imports method. So far, so good. Now, let's assume that we will introduce this change. Uh, in this change, what we are actually doing is introducing a new method that's go, uh, called the get all imports method. This, meth, uh, this change, by definition, is what we call a breaking change, right? Because it can potentially impact any client code. Right? For instance, let, let's, let's think of a class that uh, is actually implementing this interface. That class will be forced to implement the added method. But in this case, for the Aster case, or and the LeapParse class in particular, there is no impact of such change, and therefore there is no broken use. But now let's imagine that the Spoon uh, maintainers decide to remove the whole interface and all of its members. Now, in this case, we do have a breaking change, which is removing the class. But not only that, we also get a broken use. And you can see it here, where we are actually referring to the import scanner interface and where we are actually invoking one of the methods that have been removed with the class. Now, this takes us to this scenario where we as clients are constantly aware or concerned about upgrading to a new version uh, of a library, right? So 
we are wondering all the time what's the worst that could happen when we upgrade and we always imagine the worst scenarios possible. This has, l has led us to the misconception that breaking changes are always harmful. But what we have discovered with our research is that that, m that might not be true at all, especially because breaking changes are usually introduced to uh, add new features to the library, to fix some bugs, to uh, fix some security issues, to even refactor or improve the design of the library itself, right? What we really need to check is those cases where we are actually introducing broken uses on our own client code and just have the evidence to make an informed decision when we are checking whether or not to introduce the breaking change. So now let's see a real example of how this looks in the WAH. So we go back to Spoon. Uh, Spoon is an open source library that we use to analyze and transform Java source code. In general, Spoon maintainers are very concerned about stability and therefore they avoid introducing breaking changes. However, when they introduce them, they follow a very strict uh, development workflow to announce the changes. For instance, when they are removing a member from the library, they will always first label them with the add deprecated annotation. So I will tell you a story. And basically is that in September 2019, one of the Spoon developers decided to introduce a new feature to pretty print Java import state statements. This made uh, previous members of the library obsolete meaning that they were needed to be labeled with the add deprecated annotation. So in the change uh, of the pull request, you can actually see that the import scanner and, the, and its implementation were both labeled with the add deprecated annotation. So far, so good. Three months later, in December 2019, they thought that it was a good timing to remove the deprecated members, right? So the import scanner classes were gone. And this is what we can actually see in the diff of the pull request. Import scanner and import scanner impl are both removed from the library. Now, what they notice actually is that this change, which was a breaking change, actually, actually created a broken use or a set of broken uses on two important or two very relevant clients of the, of the library. One of those was Astor, right? So two months later, after they removed the deprecated classes, they decided to restore the, the, the import scanner classes and include them back in the repository. Now our question is how they could avoid this? right? How they could have saved almost half a year of work. So right now there exist some strategies that we can use to foresee uh, these changes. One of those is regression testing. And in the case of regression testing, what you usually have is a good test suite that you run just to check that if you make a change, no compilation error appears on, uh, on the test themselves, right? The problem with the import scanner case is that the import, import scanner test class was also removed with the pull request because they thought that that class wasn't needed anymore, right? The other issue with regression testing in general, this is not just related to Spoon, is that you cannot cover all cases of breaking changes and also you do not know what's the impact on your client code. Another strategy to cope with breaking changes is using static analysis tools such as JDIF and JAPICMP. These tools are not currently being used by Spoon, but they are used by other libraries such as Google Guava. And in this case, you have uh, the output of the JDIF tool run in two versions uh, of the Google Guava uh, library. 
So basically here you have like a very extensive or a, an extensive list of breaking changes, but still you do not know how these changes will, will impact your client code. So to cope with this last issue, we have something called reverse dependency compatibility testing or RDCT for short. And the idea of RDCT is that you have a, a set of relevant clients, all of them with their own uh, test suite, right? And what you do is that you get the source code of such um, clients, you inject the new release or the new version of the library in their dependencies, and then you build them and run their test suite. What are the bad things about this approach? Uh, first, clients should be buildable and have a test suite that passes all the time. And the other thing is that RDCT is super expensive in, ter in terms of time and computational resources, right? Because you need to build all the clients all the time and you need to know them beforehand. This also results in a set of verbose log files that you need to manually check to identify the causes of the issues, right? So if we go back to the Aster's build log file, what we found out is that it reported more than 200 errors and it had more than 700 log lines. And not all of these errors were related to the changes that were introduced in the pull request. And you couldn't pinpoint or uh, trace back such errors to the breaking changes that you identified uh, in the pull request. So if we go back in time to September 2019, just when the developers were about to make the changes, we can imagine that the best thing to do then was to create like these what if scenarios and have a concrete answer to those what if scenarios. For instance, the first question that the developer um, might have asked was, what if I deprecate this class? What if I remove this class? Actually, what if I remove just one method of this class? And moreover, if I want to improve it or enhance it, what if I just leave it as it is and I just add a new method, right? So here is where BreakBot starts to play, play a role, right? BreakBot is a GitHub bot for Java projects that analyzes pull requests before they are merged into the main branch. It looks for two things. First, they introduce breaking changes, and to do that, it relies on the capabilities of existing tools such as JAPI CMP, but it also statically detects the impact of such breaking changes on client code. So this is like the overview of how BreakBot works. You usually have a pull request with the head pointer pointing to the last commit of the branch of the pull request. Then the base pointer pointing to the branch where you would like to merge in, the pull request in. And then what we do is that we compute the breaking changes between these two pointers. This results in a delta model that's nothing more than the set of breaking changes and declarations that are introducing such breaking changes. Then we have a list of uh, predefined clients, and then we use the delta model to, to uh, go to the second phase, phase, which is the impact analysis phase. In the impact analysis, we detect the broken uses on such clients and we create a new model. Both the delta model and the impact model are used to create a report that's shown to the library maintainers as part of a GitHub check. Now, let's go back to the Spoon uh, case study just to foresee how this looks like uh, in the wild. Uh, and here, basically, we have uh, a fork of the repository. We go to the pull request. We go to the pull request that actually removed the deprecated members. And here you will see BreakBot as a check on GitHub. 
when we click on the details, you will see that uh, BreakBot has like this report where you have the number of breaking changes that have been introduced, the number of broken users, and the number of impacted clients. First, we list the, the, the set of breaking changes, all of them with their kind, and also the clients that are, are being impacted by such change, right? Also, if you would like to check the, the difference, for instance, here we know that import scanner has been removed, that is a class removed. We can go to the diff just to understand the problem. And then we navigate to the import scanner, which is here. We can actually see that the class has been removed. Now, we go back here, uh, we go to the client list, and if we check for Aster, we can actually see the number of broken uses that are reported out from uh, applying all the breaking changes on the, on the code, right? If we want more details, we can actually see the list of broken uses here for Aster, each one of them referring to a breaking declaration, a breaking type, and a type of use. In the case of import context, for instance, we can click on it and we will see the code that has been impacted. Actually, if we zoom in here, you can see this, that this is the same code that I showed you at the beginning of the presentation. So basically here we have a reference to import scan, uh, sorry, to import scanner. And then we are invoking some of the methods uh, of the class. Now, with BreakBot, we can identify these problematic cases where we can decide not to accept the pull request, but we can actually foresee some cases where there are a list of breaking changes that are being added, but that are not uh, touching or breaking the code of any of the clients that you have reported. So in those cases, it gives you some, some com confidence to actually introduce the changes that you want to introduce. This pull request, for instance, had 49 commits, 42 change files, more than 7,000 patch lines, and more than 26, uh, 26 comments created by uh, the, um, the developers. Now, for future research plans, what we would like to know it is like which aspects do we need to configure? Right now, for instance, we're talking about pull requests, but it might happen that in the future we would like to talk about commits. We would also like to uh, find a way to discover clients because right now we assume that the libraries know which clients are relevant for them, but it might be nice to have a representative sample that we can use to more or less foresee how the changes will impact all the clients uh, of a library. We also want to know which insights we need to include in the report and extend the evaluation uh, of BreakBot. We would like to check the accuracy of Maracas, for instance, the performance of BreakBot in general, and the usability and usefulness of the tool. Finally, we would like to move from the library side to the client side and have something like Dependabot++, which is something like a bot that not only tells you about the new releases that are out there, but also on how those releases can impact your own code. So this is for now. Uh, thanks a lot for your attention, if you managed to arrive till this point. Uh, if you want to contact us to discuss some ideas or to give us your, your opinion on, on BreakBot, please do not hesitate to contact us. Also, if you want to check the tool itself, it is available online here. And also you can check Maracas, which is the, tool, the underlying tool that supports BreakBot. The paper, this is the title, the, the whole title, and you can also access it online. Thanks for watching.